Hello, and welcome to the Keeping It Young podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Bethley. And we are the Youngs. Welcome. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this particular day, Monday morning, the weekend after Thanksgiving. Yes, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Hope you did. And I hope you're still thankful. These Absolutely. are um, so much that uh, God has been so good to us, so many things we can be grateful for. Mm. And uh, one of the things to always remember in our families and our marriage is to continually say it, say thank you. Mm. Yes. It helps our spirits to be better. It helps our marriage to be better. It helps our children to be better. Yes. And a gratitude is just one of those important, important spiritual matters in Christianity. Saying it, it showing it. And so. I'd like to say thank you to all of you who listen, who follow us, who have, what are all those words? I don't even know all those techno words that you you like, you follow, you share. Like, follow, share, subscribe. You <laughs> there mean we those, go. Those subscribe. words? Subscribe. That is the word that was not coming those to me. Those techno thank words you. like like and share. <laughs> That we learn from a toddler, but now means different things because of social media. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And you know, Bethany and I are so thankful for all of you that listen to us. And uh, we just continually run into people, uh, meet people, and uh, hear from people that uh, have enjoyed the podcast or learning from our podcast. And we hope that many of you, if you find something that's a help to you and, and, and you know, it's a blessing to you, hope you'll like it and share it. And we do hope you'll subscribe. Yes. And uh, we are so very thankful for you. We interrupted last week to have just a short little Thanksgiving chat with y'all. Yes. And uh, we interrupted our series on emotions and personalities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been working our way through one of the, the, the big emotions that we all have to deal with, and that is anger. Yes. Yes. And we did, uh, we've already had, I think, several, two or three episodes about it. And uh, just a couple more here probably will wind us down. But we've been just dealing with this idea, this anger, that it's a, a an emotion common to us all. Yes. Although I, I did, uh, it caught my attention when I was reading in Tim LaHaye's book about personality. And he said that anger is a sin common to us all. Yes, I, I was thought, thinking um, that earlier too. That's uh, that's a whole different way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. So what we've done so far is we've really, you know, just kind of introduced this topic of anger and then we've primarily taken several weeks here to talk about how to deal with it in our marriage. Right. Was there anything else that has come up as far as our interactions that you think we need to mention to the audience? I don't think so. Okay. I didn't think so either. We just mm -hmm. want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. So we're going to switch gears today and mm -hmm. jump in to the middle of a new kind of a new part of this anger and that is dealing with the children. Part of the anger episodes, Ep yes. Anger episodes, <laughs> and we've got to talk about dealing with anger in our children. And this is a really big one. It is. Uh, we are living in a culture where so many families are very comfortable with anger yes. and excuse anger or mm. explain it. And, and it's everything from, and, and don't be offended by this, but it's everything from, well, you know, my kid has this or my kid has that. Mm. Uh, you know, that's just how my kid is. Right. And so anger. Are you talking about maybe like diagnosed disorders? Yes. So my we'll child use, has, they've been diagnosed with, and you fill in the blank you from in the, the blank doctor. And therefore, there's, there's a ton of them now. Yes. So there's, you know, if you go to the doctor, you're, if you find yourself a child psychologist, your, your child psychologist will give you any number of diagnoses to help explain your children's behavior. Right. And so it's very common today to overlook it, or even, this is a weird one to me. Uh, that I think is new to our culture, and it's very common to even chuckle at anger. Mm -hmm. And Beth and I were observing recently that on like the Instagram feeds or Instagram reels, yes, or on TikTok, for instance, you'll find all kinds of people making videos of their angry little child. Yes, and it may not be you know that the kid is throwing a temper tantrum. It may just be the little kid is stomping its foot and giving you what for. Mm -hmm. And let's videotape that because that's hilarious, right. and it gets likes and shares. But moms and dads, I, Beth and I just want to tell you that it's not just um, perhaps entertainment for our culture. It is without doubt, it is a, it is a sin. We are yes. sinning against our children to allow their anger to fester, uh, to remain, uh, you know, not corrected. Right. Yes. And so to not just, disciple them through absolutely. that. Yes. And, and there's one more side to this. And I was reading just this week, cause I've been preaching a lot on the family over the last week. And the Bible does say very clearly that we as parents, as fathers, he says, mm -hmm are not to provoke their children to anger. Mm. And that's a whole other side to this. Uh, one of the things I've noticed that it's also kind of cool on social media to set your child up mm -hmm. so that you can record their reactions, their anger. Yes. And uh, I suppose you can get money from that. 
but mm-hmm. I think you're also accountable to God for that. Right. And that may sound a little harsh, but when we are provoking our child to anger, even if it's for money, even if it's for entertainment, even if it's for to see how many likes you can get or how many shares mm-hmm. you can get on uh, you know some posting you put on a social media site somewhere, it is absolutely incorrect and wrong to provoke our children to anger. Right. And I always think when I see something like that on Instagram, and and please forgive me, I'm not thinking of anyone necessarily in particular because it is so prolific it's just everywhere. on Instagram to set your child up in a certain situation just to see how they'll respond, whether they respond in sass or in anger or in fear or in tears. And when I see that, I always think to myself, you know, our children have so many opportunities already to be afraid of something, to be angry about something, to disobey in a certain situation. Why would you set them up? Why would you um, make up a scenario that would put them in a position of showing their sinful nature already? I I don't understand that. It is hard for us to wrap our, our minds around it. Apparently, it's just that it's very cool to do in our culture. Right. And it makes another Instagram reel that may get another, you know, 150 likes or whatever, maybe even or more. more. Yes. Sure. And so this is, a, this is a huge deal, moms and dads. And if you're going to raise your children to, to be successful adults, one mm-hmm. of the major areas you have to confront is anger. Yes. And it may be their personality is more prone to anger. And mm-hmm. we've seen that in our own family. We have, yes. you know, several of our children have a personality that's more given to where, you know, they feel stronger about things, more strongly right. about things. Uh-huh. And so uh, it may be personality, but but certainly all of us have to battle this emotion. It is mm-hmm. one of the most common emotions known to mankind. Yes. And, and moms and dads, you have to help your children to handle it, overcome it. You have to respond to it correctly. Yes. And I would... I would not necessarily accept it. Um, I do talk to a lot of parents who will say, well, you know, one of our children, they're just really angry. And you can tell that, that it does bring sorrow to the parents' hearts. Nobody wants an angry child, really. But instead of facing it head on, instead of praying about it, instead of getting in the Bible and finding wisdom about how to deal with the child, they just kind of accept it. Oh, that's just kind of how they are. And so we want to give you some help for that because um, dealing with an angry child is just not a fun thing and it should not be an acceptable thing. That's exactly right. And I hope you uh, took, you know, listen to that very carefully. Don't accept it. It's not acceptable. It's not, um, there's no, don't make no excuses. Right. Recognize it as this is wrong. And if I'm going to help my child in the future to be successful in life, Mm -hmm. to have a happy marriage and to raise my grandchildren well, one of the things that has to be dealt with and conquered is the issue of anger. Right. And I think parents, it may help you if you think biblically um, instead of culturally that way. Anger is such an acceptable emotion. Well, you just need to get it out. Just get it out. It's okay. Um, But remember, we we do, we have those two quotes we've been talking about on every episode just about. Um, Anger is an emotion common to us all, but anger is also a sin common to us all. Sure. And moms and dads, you've noticed that as our culture, um, our culture is just so different today. Uh, We have grown, uh, we have adults, we have young people that are adults who throw temper tantrums. Yes. Who when, you know, even an election, if they're, you know, their candidate doesn't get elected or the the candidate that they despise. Mm. We we have images of people screaming in anger. And how many pictures have we seen over the last year of rioting where, you know, or the last number of years of rioting where there's a a, a full grown adult in a policeman's face and they're just so angry angry Mm. or policemen themselves who are so angry yes and our whole culture is is really dealing with this Mm -hmm. and so moms and dads this is really essential so let's jump into the notes yes and uh, let's just talk about how to deal with anger in our children and and the first one here is so simple Mm. but uh, i i just just say it pray about it yes start by praying about the anger if it's you personally pray about it yes and just admit it god i battle with anger and i have issues with anger because one of the things you'll find as a believer in Ephesians chapter four and five is that we're to walk in the spirit by right. confronting our old sinful nature. 
Mm-hmm. and being renewed in the spirit of our mind and putting on the new man. Right. And one of the things we have to deal with is anger because anger always leads to bitterness and mm-hmm. bitterness then becomes a cycle. Yes. I get angry if I don't deal with it, it produces bitterness. If we don't deal with bitterness, it produces more anger, mm-hmm. which in turn produces more bitterness and the cycle is nonstop yes. and it can really do great damage. So one of the ways you start is you pray about it. Have you prayed about your child's anger? Mm. Have you asked God for wisdom? Sometimes we don't, you know, how do I confront this? How do I help this child of mine? Mm-hmm. And and yet the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, that we can ask of God and he gives liberally to all men and, and he doesn't, in, in our authorized version, he upbraids not. He doesn't, right. he doesn't get onto you. He doesn't, you know, doesn't fuss at you. Well, you know, like, are you asking me again for help? <laughs> uh, God's not that way. And sometimes we don't know how to handle our children. We're like, Lord, what, how do we help our child to overcome this intensity? Right. They respond with intensity and they get so angry and mm-hmm. they lose their temper. So Beth and I would just say to you, pray about it. Pray about it. And just think of all of the prayer verses where our Heavenly Father promises to hear us and to answer us. Absolutely. And I think it's in Matthew 7 where uh, you get the illustration of asking and seeking and knocking and asking and seeking and knocking. Yes. And you just keep going and going and going. So it say, well, I've prayed about it, but oh, they're still angry and I still don't know what to do. Well, keep on praying. Keep sure. on praying. Yeah. And one of the things I would uh, just remind you of there, if you don't know this, is that uh, sometimes we pray about things and then we do get frustrated because we think God's not answering. But when mm. it comes to humanity... Yes. To those of us created in the image of God, Mm -hmm. God's not just necessarily going to remove the, you know, wave. In my preaching, I would say God won't wave some kind of spiritual magic wand. Right. And all of a sudden that issue is gone because Mm -hmm. what God does is he goes to work in our lives to build character. Yes. And character takes time. Yes. And in some people it takes longer. Mm Mm-hmm. Some people are more stubborn than others. <laughs> uh, you know, present huh. company, you know, obviously exception. There we go. We're exceptions yep. there, obviously. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is God works in a different way. So pray mm. about it and don't stop praying about it and keep praying about it and depend on God to help you with this because he will. Yes, I, I know. I feel like we're kind of beating this first point, but I just recently listened to a podcast. Um, it was actually a session done at a ladies conference and it was about praying for our children and nurturing our children in the admonition of the Lord. And one of the things that she um, encouraged us as moms to do was to pray that we would see our children the way God sees them. So first of all, um, we may look at an angry child and just be frustrated. But when God looks at that angry child, he has compassion. Hmm. He has mercy, he has grace, and he's wanting to help them. So ask the Lord to see your child the way he sees them. And then she also encouraged us as moms to ask the Lord to actually see him working because we have an idea of how God is going to work, just like David just talked about. We want God to wave a magic wand, so to speak, and everything's gone, but um We need to ask him, Lord, give me eyes to see you at work because he works so differently than we do. But the word of God also promises that he does exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Absolutely. That's really good. So pray, pray, pray. Here's the second one. Let's jump to the second point here. And the second thing we would say to you, if you're going to deal with your children's anger, you have to, you have to be willing to examine your parenting. Mm, How humbling. This is hard. Ephesians 6, 4, Father, don't anger your children. That's a command mm, from God. Yes. And and there's no doubt about it that our children can be provoked to anger. It may mm-hmm. be because we've worn them out. Yes. We kept them out too late. Yes. We've had them going too fast. Uh, indirectly, sometimes our schedule can provoke our children to anger. Yes. And sometimes I think, you know, in our American desire to get ahead, we want bigger homes, nicer cars, more clothes. Mm. We work, 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 work. You know, and, and even our in our culture, a lot of moms will leave their children in the care of grandma mm-hmm. or e- even differently a in a daycare. Mm-hmm. And, and our schedule is provoking our children to wrath sometimes. Well, and even I would say if you have a little bit older children, their schedule may be provoking them to anger. There are so many things for our children to be op, uh, to be involved in, whether that is, you know, drama opportunities, sport opportunities, music opportunities, um, this extra class, that extra class, this extra practice. And if you notice that your um, upper elementary school 
child or your teenager is just all the time, just irritable all the time, it could be that they're just involved in too much. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes we're unfair or inconsistent, and that also provokes our children to run. Mm. When, when we are inconsistent and in, say our dis- discipline, one day we're like, you know, we're all over them. And it may be because, not because we're training them, but just because we're irritated. Right. Or that we're tired ourselves. So mm-hmm. we're inconsistent. And one day we're just all over them. They can get by with nothing. And then at other times we laugh about it and ignore it. Right. That kind of inconsistency will provoke your children to anger. Yes. And when we're unfair, you know, mm-hmm. if we treat our children, there's all kinds of illustrations in the Bible. Joseph's parents, uh, they, they played, you know, uh, dad had a favorite there. Dad treated Joseph as a favorite, mm-hmm. which provoked the brothers to anger, caused massive issues in that family. Yes. And we even see that when uh, Jacob and Esau, mm-hmm. uh, Jacob, you know, he was mama's favorite. Esau was daddy's favorite. Right. And there was anger issues. Esau was a very angry young man. Mm-hmm. And it was because he felt like, you know, he was always, he was not a- able to measure up. Mom had a way of getting her favorite promoted. Right. And uh, that's just, if we are the ones provoking our children to anger, then we need to examine our parenting. Yes. And uh, I, I put in my notes, just a reminder, children can be provoked to anger when we set them up. Mm-hmm. And, and if, and, and I just want to caution you about that. I want to be wise about that. I know there are people, uh, you know, that, that are very prolific in, in recordings and videos and sharing. It's all over. You can't watch any list of reels without finding mm-hmm. people making videos of their children. Right. And be wise about provoking them to anger. If you are angering your child, you are disobeying the Bible. Yes. And there's just no way around that. That right. is a very, very clear. And and so children can be provoked to anger. Bethany has already touched on it. Our teens can as well. Mm-hmm. And our schedule can, their schedule can. Uh, so now teens can be provoked to anger when we refuse to understand them. Yes. Uh, teens are making that transition from, I'm no longer a child, I'm becoming an adult. They're still under our care. Right. But it's not so much our ordered care. It's not that we're ordering them. Now we're trying in their teen years to teach them to think. Yes. To start parenting themselves, to start mm-hmm. leading themselves, to start reasoning things through. And uh, probably the, one of the, the greatest illustrations of that, we don't know anything about Daniel's parents in the Bible, the Daniel mm-hmm. in the Bible. Right. We, we don't know anything about him, but it is amazing. Commentaries believe he was about 17 years old when he lived in Babylon as a slave under Nebuchadnezzar, mm-hmm. chosen as one of the, you know, the, the Jerusalem young men. He's now work, you know, he's underneath the charge of the eunuchs and Daniel Daniel, it's amazing. It's obvious that he was well-trained. He knew how to interact when he disagreed with something. Right. And he knew how to interact, how to, how to talk to authority, right. how to reason with authority. He knew how to make offers. And he also was willing to give. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that says a lot about his parents. A 17-year-old yes. doesn't come to that realization on his own. True. And so when we refuse to understand where they are and to understand mm-hmm. what's going on in their life and moms and dads, the only way to understand your teenagers is, is with there's, there's the main way is in this word. It's the word talk. Yes. The more you have conversations with your teenager, the more you talk, talk, that's, that's why you have to have meals together. Mm. That's why you have to don't, don't let your children be uh, you know, I come home and go to my bedroom and close the door and I don't see the family. Right. Your family must stay connected. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for a teenager to be sullen and withdrawn and locked away to themselves in a mm-hmm. bedroom. Uh, go to work on that because as a parent, the only way to understand your child is interacting with them via right. talking. Yes. And when we treat them like children, that also provokes them to anger. Mm-hmm. And we've said to our children before, you know, some of our kids, you know, will say every kid does, you know, like, well, you're treating me like a, like a kid. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is sometimes a teenager has to be treated like a child because they refuse to, to act like an adult. <laughs> yes. But but we've got to be careful about that. Mm-hmm. Your child, your teenager is not a child. Mm-hmm. And, and so we've got to be careful. Uh, we need to examine our parenting. That's what we're trying yes. to say here. Any other thought about that? Just examine how you're speaking to your teenager. If you notice that they're um, withdrawing from you, that can be a sign of anger. If you notice that they back tuck you quite a bit, then it could be a sign that maybe um, we as parents need to pick it up just a little bit. And even if you have to have a conversation with your teenager about something that they need to change, Mm -hmm. you can do that in a way that is not angering to them. And I'm sure we've covered that on other episodes. So you don't talk down to them. You don't, um, 
dismiss what they're saying back to you. You listen to them and then guide the, the conversation from there so that they are not provoked to anger. Sure. Now, in, in dealing with anger, we want to pray about it. That was number one. Yes. We want to examine parenting, our own yes. parenting. That's number two. Mm-hmm. But we also need to understand our children's anger. And, and there's a couple of things here. Here's a quote I found. Unresolved anger is the number one enemy of our teens' healthy development and spiritual growth. Unresolved anger is the number one enemy of your teen's healthy development and spiritual growth. Psychologist Gary Oliver said that anger has three primary emotions, hurt feelings, Mm -hmm. frustrations, and fear or feeling unsafe. So that our children get their feelings hurt. That may be from somebody else at school. It may be from a teacher or it may be from us as parents. Right. Hurt feelings result in anger. Mm -hmm. frustrations result in anger. And when we are inconsistent, when we're unfair, when we set them up, when we are too busy, uh, those frustrations result in anger. And when there's fear or feeling unsafe, those result in anger. Yes. And and the result is that that usually the way to identify it is that our children begin to distance themselves uh, from others. They Mm -hmm. begin to have relational problems. Yes. And it may be a relational problem with you. It may be a relational problem with their siblings. That you, mm-hmm. They may be a teacher at school or with their coach. But when your children begin having relational problems, you, you, you can identify, oh, we have an anger issue going on here. Right. Because sometimes you can't always see anger in our children. Mm. Sometimes it simmers. Yes. And it's quiet. But it always causes our children to walk in darkness. So there's spiritual problems. They distance themselves from others. That's relational problems. They end up walking in darkness. Anger always leads us to more sin. So there's spiritual problems. But it also lowers our joy levels. So then there's emotional problems. Mm -hmm. So you've got to understand that this is a really big deal. That's what I'm trying to draw attention to here. Yes. And just be very, very aware. If you feel at all that your teenager is avoiding you or is avoiding a certain teacher or sibling or whatever, just be very, very aware and and pray about it before you approach them. You know, Lord, how can I help with this? It could be that they just, uh, something's been hurt. It could be that they're just having an emotional day and they're like, mom, I'm fine. (laughs) But um, it could also be that they're dealing with some anger issues. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit here. Let's at least jump in. We've only got two or three minutes here left. Okay. But let's jump in a little bit and talk specifically about children, Mm. our our younger children. Now, we don't mean teens here. We mean children. And the first thing Bethany and I would say to you is start early to confront it. Start early, early, early. If your child has a tendency to deal with anger yes. and, and usually this is driven by personality. They're a strong willed child mm-hmm. or, you know, they're to use an old term. They're, they're more choleric in their personality. Mm-hmm. Um, by nature, they're more emotionally driven. Maybe mm-hmm. uh, you've got to start very, very early confronting that. The thing is you have to talk about it. You have to confront it. You start by making a rule, start here, make a rule in your family that anger is unacceptable. Right. And moms and dads, you have to model this. Yes. You have to be willing to recognize that. And when you blow up, when you lose your temper or when you are uptight, when you shouldn't have been, you have to apologize. You have Mm -hmm. to draw attention to the fact that I know it's wrong in my life as well. Right. Start there, but make it a rule in your family. We do not, we do not respond in anger. We do not tolerate anger. Anger is always, always, always wrong. And you've got to, you've got to just make it a rule, make it a rule and determine This is a big one, and we'll probably have to talk more about this next week. But determine what will happen when there's anger present. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about, just briefly, about in our adult lives. When anger is present, there is a right way to handle that. First of all, we have to we have to make sure that we don't sin when we're feeling angry. Mm. Be angry and sin not. Right. So when you have, you know, you're starting to feel this emotion of anger, you also have to make sure, I'm not going to, I'm I'm struggling here emotionally. Right. I'm uptight. I'm bothered. Like mm-hmm. maybe you're having a disagreement with each other in your marriage and mm-hmm. you're starting to get angry about it. The command from God is when that happens, be angry and sin not. Right. You must guard your tongue. Yes. You must guard your response. You have to start obeying that verse that we've quoted so many times, uh, a soft answer mm-hmm. that you know turns away wrath. Right. We have to absolutely make sure that we are responding to it carefully and, and we're, we predetermine what will happen when anger is present in our own lives. Yes. 
but then we predetermine what will happen when anger is present in our children's life. Mm. And that's a harder one, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And so what are some things, let's just kind of close here and then we'll come back and talk about it in more detail next week. Just some practical advice here. What are some things that ought to be predetermined? And let's say here's a mom and her child is really battling anger. Mm -hmm. What are some steps she could put in place? So, you know what, when my child blows up, here are some things I should do or could do. Right. Well, first of all, I would encourage you mamas, don't think it's cute. It is very, very culturally acceptable and popular even for us to think it's cute. Um, Sass in our girls. Um, If you look in the Bible, you will not find that a sassy woman was a godly woman. And you may look at your two-year-old and think, yeah, but it's cute when she's two, but um, it will boggle your mind how fast she will be a woman. And that sass has no place in a godly woman's life. So it's not cute. It's not cute when your three-year-old boy has to turn around and kick something because he's angry. It's not cute. And you know, the way to think about that is that nobody respects a sassy um, lady. Right. Right. Who, who is always giving you what for, who's always uptight, who right. is announcing loudly her, her disgust with things and letting you know where she stands. Right. Nobody respects that. And nobody, nobody, uh, nobody finds it enjoyable when there's a man who is anger. No, and even I would say a 10 or 12-year-old boy or certainly a 15-year-old boy, mm-hmm. that is a scary thing when a teenager has that kind of anger. So don't think it's cute. But I would say once you start recognizing it, and it may even start on the changing table when you are trying to change your child and they get angry with you and they arch their back or they even strike out at you, then I would take their little hand and I would hold it and you firmly say, no, you will not get angry at mama. Mama is changing your diaper. You calmly just hold their little hands and pause and wait for them to calm down. Um, It could be a bath time situation. It could be a bedtime situation. But I would just um, predetermine mamas that you will not face it with your own frustration, but you will face it calmly and quietly, but with determination, with force behind it, that your child knows there's no way I'm going to win against sure. my mom in this. And the two words there, uh, uh, mom and dad, would be tone and force when yes. they're little. When they're really, really young, you mm. change your tone calmly, yes. but you make clear that your tone, you are not pleased. It is okay to let your child know, I am not pleased with this. Yes. And then you have to force the issue with mm. a young one, a, a especially. So we're out of time okay. and uh, that's going to be a great place to come back and start next week mm-hmm. and uh, join us next week. We'll continue this conversation about helping our children with their anger. We're, we're closing with a reminder. You have to begin predetermining how you will handle anger before the anger shows up. Yes. To handle it in the moment is mm-hmm. always always unhelpful. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today here at uh, Keeping It Young Podcast. Beth and I always love sharing with you uh, ideas, thoughts, commands, teachings, and uh, so forth, uh, experiences about raising children. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to continuing this conversation next week. You're listening to Keeping It Young Podcast. Visit us at keepingityoungpodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you if you have any questions or comments. We would just be thrilled to receive those. Reach out anytime. And in the meantime, serve the Lord with gladness. The Keeping It Young Podcast is a Bax 5 Media Production.